man's constant groping of things unknown. Drawing from the endless reaches of time, brings to light many startling things. Startling because they seem new. Sudden. But most are not new to the signs of the ages. A life is begun. People. All going somewhere. All with their own thoughts. Their own ideas. All with their own personalities. One is wrong because he does right. One is right because he does wrong. Pull the string. Dance to that which one is created for. A new day is begun. A new life is begun. A life is ended. Let me see that note. The records will tell the story. I was put in jail recently. Why? Because I, a man, was caught on the street wearing women's clothing. This was my fourth arrest for the same act. In life, I must continue wearing them. Therefore, it would only be a matter of time until my next arrest. This is the only way. Let my body rest in death, forever, in the things I cannot wear. In life. Inspector. Doctor. Sit down. Thank you. You're a very busy man, Dr. Alton, I know. I appreciate this time you're giving me. Business or pleasure, Inspector? In a way. Business. From policeman to inspector. Twenty years of it. I guess I've seen everything there is for a policeman to see. Yet I wonder if we ever stop learning. Learning about which we see. Trying to learn more about an ounce of prevention. I'm a man who thrives on learning. We only have one life to live. If we throw that one away, what is there left? Doctor, I'm hoping to learn something from you. And with that knowledge maybe save some human from a fate which I just witnessed a few days ago. A four-time loser. This type of case comes to me, as well as yourself, many times during the course of one month. The suicide. The suicide. Most of us have our idiosyncrasies. This fellow's was quite pronounced. Yes, but I wonder if it rated the death warrant it received. Well, that's why I'm here today, Doctor. What do we do about it? I've always heard you to be a hard-hearted policeman, Inspector. Isn't that what's thought of most policemen? The laws are written. The policeman is hired to see that those laws are enforced. We have a job to do. As in most jobs there is always somebody who doesn't want that job to be done. In most factories today, the employer has put up suggestion boxes. Even the employer needs advice once in a while. I think in the case that we're referring to, I need advice. Maybe it shouldn't have happened as it did. But it did. Perhaps the next time. We can prevent it. Let's get our stories straight. You referring to the suicide of the transvestite? If that's the word you man of medical science use for a man who wears women's clothing, yes. Yes, in cold, technical language, that's the word. As unfriendly and as vicious as it may sound. However in actuality it's not an unfriendly word, nor is it vicious when you know the people to whom it pertains. Would a sex operation do these people any good? I understand you were quite prominent in a case that hit the headlines a few weeks ago. Some cases yes, others no. Well the papers certainly had a field day with that one. Strange as it may seem, even though it was a field day, as you so aptly put it, it's not a new story. Sex change has been performed many times. 
those whose sex can be changed, they're the easy ones. But what of those who so desperately want to be of the opposite sex, yet can't change their sex? Such as was the case with Patrick. Patricia. The suicide. I'd like to understand this doctor as best you can tell me. You can only fully understand the sex change by taking two entirely different cases. Two men with exactly the same background from childhood to manhood, and on to their own decisions and destinations. I'd like to hear the story to the fullest. Only the infinity of the depths of a man's mind can really tell the story. Hi Glenn. Hi Johnny. Come on in. I'm headed right for the kitchen. I can't let that dinner burn. You know I thought I was going to have to eat alone tonight. Well you probably will. Because I've already eaten. What's up? Nothing much. Say, you really look down in the dumps. I guess I've got a problem. Haven't we all? I mean a real problem, one like I've never had to face before. Our whole existence is one big problem after another. I want to get married. You have a problem. When did this all come about? For nearly a year, I've been engaged to a very wonderful girl. Now the time is getting very close to the man with the book, and I'm scared to death. Do you love her? Very much. Does she love you? Yes. There's no problem. Marry the girl. Are you forgetting about my other self? You have to tell her, of course. Yeah. I have to tell her. But when? Before? Or after? I think you know the answer to that one yourself. My mind's in a muddle, like in a thick fog, I can't make sense to myself sometimes. I thought I could stop wearing these things. I tried, honestly I tried. I haven't had a stitch of them on for nearly two weeks until tonight. Then I couldn't stand it anymore. I had to put them on, or go out of my mind. I'm afraid I'll lose her. I don't want that to happen, because I really love her. Yes. Yes. It pleasures me. <laughs> 